Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another episode of The Design Factory. In this episode I want to show you my process on how to create a small quick reference artboard before jumping into the actual design of the website. Right now we have our high fidelity wireframes and we could totally start doing actual design and finalizing all the choices we made in the previous stages. But before starting, it's always better having a style guide with our brand identity. If you're working for a client, always ask about their brand identity, if they have a style guide or an overall guideline and best practices to keep their brand consistent. Defining a brand identity, not even super detailed but just approximate will help you to maintain your design consistent and keep a good fidelity throughout your entire process. Of course because I'm designing my own site I already have a pretty well-defined brand identity with fonts and colors. I like to start with a font family by applying default styles for headers and paragraphs with bold and italic derivation. I also like to split my file in two sections to test my choice on both light and dark background and check which one is more readable and how my font looks and works on different situations. Of course the choice of a font is pretty personal and relies on different factors. When in doubt, I always suggest to go and check the Google Fonts library, a nice collection of free fonts ready for the web. Always avoid crazy complicated fonts hard to read or heavy to load and maintain the choice of your font to one, maximum two different font families. When it comes to time to pick a color palette, always try to keep it simple and remember that less is better. If you're new to color theory or you don't know anything about best practices, there are a lot of free softwares that can help you with this task. One of my favorite is Adobe Cooler or Adobe Color CC, an easy, straightforward and free to use online application. You can simply pick a main color and start from there. The color picker presets will help you to select analog colors, complementary or monochromatic derivation, compounds, shades or completely custom colors. Try to maintain the same level of shades and saturation, maintain a sort of consistency in your palette and try to avoid hypersaturated colors if you have no idea how to use them. Try to keep your style always simple, clean and with less color derivations as possible. During the generation of your palette, I like to test my colors on different backgrounds, like the text, as well as creating different derivations of highlights and darkness to facilitate future application of rollover statuses for buttons and links. When I made my choice, I like to create one last palette with the relative color codes. I find this really helpful during the first stages of my development process when I define variables in SAS and I create my default style. 
At the end, always remember that this is my personal process that I defined and polished after years of tests and designs, and it's not definitive. Sometimes I change stuff around and try something new, just to see if I can optimize steps and improve my results. Use this video as a reference or a starting point, but don't take my words for granted and try to find your own process, something that makes you comfortable and helps you to achieve a good result. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.